Continuing from the previous part, tensions escalated on the North Korean side. As for Lee Su, if the enemy continued to attack relentlessly, things would become extremely difficult for his friend Jain. That's why she attempted to send mosquitoes carrying the virus to North Korea to spread it, hoping to control the situation through infected individuals. However, things turned out just as Lee Su feared. With her current power, direct infiltration was entirely possible, but the farther the distance, the weaker her influence, so the mosquitoes she controlled couldn't spread the steer virus as Lee Su had hoped. Returning to the battle at the Nameless Island, the North Korean military remained determined to eliminate Ja In, Lee Su, and Okja to cover up the secret of the Baekdu mountain volcano explosion. With this persistence, both Lee Su and Steer believed Ja In would continue to kill more people. However, that was never what Lee Su wanted. After all, she wanted to protect her best friend and also to save the lives of those attacking Ja In. Exploiting Lee Su's emotional vulnerability, Steer believed he wanted to protect Lee Su and her friend Ja In. If things continued as they were, many would die. At the same time, Jain would face difficulties against consecutive human attacks. Back to the battle on the sea, the warships started firing, accompanied by airstrikes from North Korean fighter jets. Of course, these artillery shells were ineffective against Jain. However, they posed a danger to Okja and Lee Su. Ultimately, the essence of this battle was to protect both of them, so Jain had to retreat to take Okja and Lee Su into the air to avoid the enemy's shelling. The issue here was that protecting loved ones while fighting was more draining than Jain thought. And if things continued like this, he knew sooner or later he would reach his limit. On another front, in the country known as the Dragon of Asia, the leader of this nation also received images of Jain sent by the neighboring country. All the information about Jain was confirmed to be true, and a sea of blood was happening on the nameless island. However, despite witnessing it firsthand, everything still seemed unbelievable to him. Nevertheless, he wanted to magnify the matter of the monster named Jain by ordering his subordinates to broadcast the footage worldwide, portraying Jain as a threat to the earth, while the resolution would be handled by the People's Republic of China. Back on the battlefield at the Nameless Island, the fighting showed no signs of stopping. On the contrary, the enemy kept pouring in, with countless fighter jets in the sky and heavy-class battleships on the sea. Although not directly involved in the fighting, Okja and Li Su were deeply concerned because now everything seemed to be ending. If Jain continued to fight, it would be too much for him. From the start, it had been an uneven battle when Jain alone had to fight against all humanity. Of course, he also realized that. For Jain, the reason why humans still existed until now as leaders of all creatures was because they had weapons, language, and writing. Moreover, since the existence of humans, they have been more wicked than all the creatures on this planet combined. But the bigger reason was that all beings on this earth had no animosity towards humans. That's why now if humans wanted to push Jain into a corner, he would respond by showing everyone the animosity of all beings. The hatred of nature is terrifying indeed. From behind Jain, Steer continued to say things that shook Lee Su's spirit, that if things continued like this, Jain would press the logout button for countless people just to protect Lee Su. As for Jain, after some deliberation, he decided to play hardball with the enemy. Immediately, he extended his arm to call upon all creatures. Not long after, following Jain's call, the all-powerful creature, other animals began to join in, starting with birds, who had ruled the sky before being usurped by humans. Under the water surface, upon hearing Jain's call, all creatures, big and small, began to respond and move forward together to fight alongside him. Very quickly, when Jain gave the command to attack from the sky or the water, all creatures aimed straight at the enemy and charged ruthlessly. At this moment, humanity would have to bear the wrath of all creatures, something they had never faced before. Going back to Jain's past when he was still a child, he felt somewhat lost watching the neighborhood kids playing together. Deep down, Jain wanted to blend in with the crowd, and his mother knew it too. At that time, she gently asked why Jain didn't go out to play with friends. Seeing Jain's silence, his mother, knowing her son's communication struggles, sat down beside him and said she knew Jain wanted to play with friends but was afraid to express his desires. As a mother, Yong Shin could read her son's emotions from his face. Without hesitation, she asked Jain to give her his hand and raised his thumb, then loudly asked if anyone wanted to play with him. Immediately after Yong Shin's voice rang out, all the neighborhood kids happily came over to play with Jain, also connecting him with the children around him. Back to reality, Jain's raised thumb also serves as a connection, but in a strange way. Instead of a few friends, he became the family of countless creatures from the sky to the deep sea. Since joining the military until now, it had been over a decade, and the North Korean campaign commander had never seen such a bizarre scene. The sea began to churn violently, causing North Korean battleships to tremble. 
At the same time, a frenzy swept over the fighter jets in the sky. Everything happened so quickly that the North Korean soldiers couldn't react in time. As for the Almighty Kid, Jain spoke briefly. After all that humans had done to him and all other creatures, from indulging their curiosity to violence, coercion for entertainment, and mass extermination without remorse for profit, at this moment, Jain would make everyone realize the enemy of all creatures was none other than humans. From afar, as images of the nameless island were broadcast worldwide, with the madness unfolding, even the leader of China was overwhelmed by the dominant power of the protagonist. Needless to say, ordinary people, whether in South or North Korea or Western countries, all had the same reaction. It was surprise and astonishment at the events unfolding. On a rather poetic afternoon, Okja was quite chill watching the missiles flying towards her. In normal circumstances, this situation would earn a one-way ticket to a strong drink for anyone. But for Okja, the missiles were simply mosquitoes because in front of her right now was Ja In, so even if she wanted to be reborn in the next life, she wouldn't be able to. As for Jain, it seemed the battle wasn't crowded enough yet. So to make it more lively, he continued to activate his power to summon more allies. This time, Jain expanded the range of his summons to 500 miles in the sky. Immediately, new flocks of birds came flocking. At the same time, Jain sent his invitation down 500 nautical miles below the sea to call on stronger creatures to join the fray. At that moment, Jain discovered there was still an existence deep beneath the sea. He was quite pleased because, besides himself, there was another entity capable of threatening humanity. Honestly, when the shape of this creature appeared, Jain was quite puzzled as to why it appeared in his place rather than in the North Sea. But anywhere would do. If it chose to manifest, Jain was ready to invite more allies to his team to welcome the enemy. As for the North Korean army, the commander immediately ordered the entire army to counterattack. However, before they could do anything, the commanding officer was horrified to see before him a monster that seemed to exist only in the legends of the North Sea. Looking at it made him want to turn around, but wherever he turned, everyone was already at the end of their ropes. So right now, 500 little brothers would have to play bloodthirsty with the sea monster commonly known as the Kraken, or more accurately, they would switch from sailing ships and airplanes to visiting their ancestors. Everywhere, the Kraken's massacre was broadcast worldwide. Through this, everyone began to feel terrified of Jain, who was being seen as a threat to humanity. For Jain, humans always mistakenly believed they understood everything in the world. That's why right now, he would let all humans know. They didn't know anything, so it was because of their stupidity that they appeared dangerous. This was a valuable lesson that Ja In wanted to give to the creature at the top of the Earth's food chain scattered around the world. Humans had named Ja In as if he were Earth's threat incarnate. In a place far from Ja In's location, Dahl returned to her normal life at her cafe. Nevertheless, Dahl always kept an eye on her friends and prayed for their safety. At the United Nations headquarters, a letter was sent to Ms. Seo Young requesting her to provide an official name for the site of the bloody battle, rather than an unnamed island as it currently stood. Seeing things becoming complicated, Seo Young's subordinate suggested handing over everything to the Department of Geography to handle. However, after a short period of consideration, upon reviewing the situation on the unnamed island, Seo Young decided to name the place where Ja In was wreaking havoc Red Island. Upon receiving the answer, Seo Young's subordinate quickly left to convey the message back to the United Nations. As for the madwoman, time was no longer on her side as Seo Young's terminal illness had worsened since the beginning. She thought she could deal with Jain to avenge her father's death. However, reality proved different from her calculations. Returning to the battle on Red Island, true to its name, in just one afternoon, a bloody storm swept through the area. Above the sea was thick smoke, while below it lay the burial ground of the northern forces. The smell of smoke combined with the strong scent of human blood turned this island into a hell on earth in every sense. Jain was already known as an extremely terrifying entity, but the recent events showed that he was even more horrifying than Steer imagined. It could be said that although both were enemies of humanity, Jain was in a different league from Steer, and it was because Jain outclassed Steer in every way that Steer couldn't obtain Jain's body. At this moment, Jain no longer cared about the destruction of humanity. Originally, according to the plan, Steer would use Li Su's body to provoke Jain, but the problem was Li Su had begun to nibble away at its power. Therefore, at the present moment, Steer was gradually falling into a passive position as it couldn't control Li Su anymore. With the current situation, if everything continued unchanged, whether humanity would be annihilated as Steer desired would no longer be up to it but would depend on the author's son. Just as Steer kept pondering, it suddenly realized. After all, Jain was ready for the road ahead. Everything with Steer was becoming quite interesting after all, it wanted to see what choice Jain would make. 
In a place quite far from Red Island, towards the north, a small glimmer began to flicker on the mainland. But when zoomed in, it wasn't that small because this was the first eruption of the Baekdu mountain volcano, marking the beginning of a disaster for the people of North Korea. Shortly after, a subordinate came to report the major event that had just happened to the leader of North Korea. Hearing that it was even bigger than the battle on Red Island, the old leader thought someone was preparing to assassinate him. But in reality, this tragedy was the eruption of the Baekdu mountain volcano. Everything was happening sooner than planned, but with its muddled brain, the old leader remained very calm because, given the current situation, this incident might just become a breakthrough for him to solve Ja In's intractable problem as well. For now, North Korea has to bear the immediate consequences of the seismic activity caused by the eruption of the Baekdu mountain volcano nationwide, which began with the collapse of the country's modern symbols. Facing the shock and horror of those witnessing the disaster, the people of North Korea turned their gaze towards the south of the Korean peninsula, where life still passed relatively peacefully. However, with the development of global information networks, news of the 7.7 Richter scale earthquake caused by the eruption of the Baekdu mountain volcano was quickly transmitted to all South Korean citizens. At first, many people didn't believe that this event would severely affect their lives. However, life is not like life, so the shocks from the north began to sweep southward. According to experts, there was a unit called the Volcano Eruption Index, and Baekdu Mountain Volcanoes Index seemed to resemble the eruption of a supervolcano that occurred in South Korea in 1996. With the current developments, North Korea is reeling from earthquakes and tsunamis, while South Korea is estimated to suffer damages of around 5 trillion won. However, the country's losses won't stop as expected by Ms. Seo Yong. The reason? The volcanic eruption, especially with volcanic ash. The northern regions are bearing the brunt of human casualties and volcanic ash. Moreover, according to the hypothesis, volcanic ash will head towards Japan as depicted on the map. However, recent changes in wind direction, not a surprise, have occurred. In X Island, the biological weapon attack by North Korea has prompted Jain to create an indomitable gust of wind in retaliation. Due to the change in wind direction, the current prediction is that volcanic ash will fly towards the central region of South Korea. Upon hearing this, all politicians present at the meeting were startled. Everything has become much worse than initially anticipated because now, even Seoul has to face the direct disaster of volcanic ash. Returning to the X Island, as night falls, it also marks the end of the battle. Lee Su, after a long sleep due to exhaustion, woke up. However, what she saw in front of her was not a bloody battlefield like this morning anymore. She wondered about the battle and was informed that the attack by the northern forces had ended. However, peace didn't last long. Lee Su found out that with the power she borrowed from Steer, right now, many people on the Korean peninsula are fighting to survive or even have lost their lives due to the eruption of Mount Baekdu. Looking towards Okja, who was still sleeping, Lee Su realized that the little girl's prophecy had become a reality with the current situation. She noticed that many infrastructures had collapsed, and land and trees had been buried by volcanic ash. Upon closer inspection, Lee Su was shocked to realize that it seemed like the volcanic ash storm was heading straight toward them. Not wanting the group to inhale smoke, she immediately called on Jain to take them away, but Jain had already planned everything. Volcanic ash couldn't reach X Island because it was heading toward Seoul. After confiding in Kraken, Jain called Okja to wake up. Okja was surprised when Jain said they would go to Seoul. While the other party wanted to go to Seoul because of the threat from volcanic ash, Okja felt normal with Ja in wanting to find a friend. However, she still wondered whether they would go to Seoul with faith or in some other way. Ja in decided to use the power of the sea, but the response from the sea shocked him. While Okja didn't understand why Ja in was worried, Steer began to pay attention to Ja in's changes. As the stubborn author's son resorts to another trick, Ja in raises his arms to the sky to connect with the birds, yet the result he receives is still a disappointing zero. Sensing something amiss, Ja in feels the power fading away gradually. Observing from behind, Lee Su is deeply concerned as Ja In inexplicably loses strength. In contrast, her worry presents an opportunity for Steer to rise. Quickly, Lee Su's mind is violently shaken as various unfortunate events unfold simultaneously. Ja In is also startled to see his friend suddenly clutching her head in pain. Similarly, Okja is greatly worried upon witnessing her sister's distress. Approaching to inquire about Lee Su's condition, Okja is surprised when Lee Su directs her concern toward Ja In urging him to leave and save himself. Jain is bewildered by his friend's sudden change in behavior. Nevertheless, Steer's presence becomes too conspicuous for Jain not to notice that Lee Su is completely under the control of the Steer virus. Steer understands why the opponent has lost almost all of his power. 
It's because Jain has lost his reason for existence, as Steer claimed. From being a human adversary to now, Jain has become a subject judged by his faults. For Steer, Jain is now just a human being. Therefore, Steer decides to end Jain's only remaining existence that surpasses its control. Caught off guard, Jain immediately activates his cat's eye to dodge Okja's lethal strikes. However, having lost almost all his power, Jain can't sustain the cat's eye for long. From being born as a human until now, this is the first time he's been punched in the face. Despite witnessing Jain's pitiful weakness, Steer is disappointed. It seems that everything the opponent has shown has even brought a strange feeling to Steer. Steer believes that keeping Jain alive now would serve no purpose as if the opponent has become trash, death would be more fitting. However, after about five seconds, Steer realizes that Jain still has some tricks up his sleeve. Even if it wants to terminate Jain right now, it can't, because Jain is still there and naturally doesn't want Kraken to witness Lee Su's death. Steer considers Jain's actions useless human regret, but it's thanks to him that Steer has survived. However, it will continue to monitor Jain closely, like watching a helpless human between life stages. As for Steer, it will continue to do everything to make humanity extinct, a long-cherished desire that couldn't be realized because of Jain's existence. In the blink of an eye, an entire evening has slipped away, and Okja now no longer falls under Steer's control. With a slight squint, the sun has risen. Okja immediately scans the surroundings to search for Lee Su, unaware that Steer has completely seized Lee Su's. Meanwhile, Jain still can't understand why he can't tap into his powers as before. He wonders if it's because he's lost his reason for existence, as Steer claimed. Jain has always harbored a deep-seated hatred for humanity. But suddenly, Jain realizes that he started to cherish humans since the moment he first spoke words of love to his mother. Even afterward, when Jain received help from the or when he unintentionally became closer to Li Su, Jain seems to have unconsciously begun to change. And even though he's never realized it until now, Jain truly no longer harbors resentment toward humanity as he once thought. While Jain is still doubting Steer's words, he suddenly notices a human hand protruding from the shore. For the old Jain, this would have been normal, but for the Jain of today, it's an entirely different matter. Jain is puzzled by his immediate nausea at the sight of a dead body as if it's the first time he's killed someone. While Jain is still feeling nauseous, he notices a drone approaching. Jain quickly tells little Okja to flee to avoid being targeted. However, to Jain's surprise, Okja remains unperturbed, explaining that it's just an unmanned surveillance drone. So apart from eavesdropping, neither of them poses any threat. The mention of surveillance reminds Jain of Steer's words about wanting him to observe closely how he would make humanity extinct. Now, as a mere ordinary human, just the thought of Steer's words makes Jain break out in a cold sweat. A familiar feeling of fear suddenly overwhelms Jain, a feeling that prey endures before being hunted down. In an instant, Jain trembles so violently that he's oblivious to everything around him. Seeing Jain in such helplessness, Okja can't bear it. Through some neural manipulation, Okja helps Jain regain some clarity, only to be hit on the head by bird droppings. Looking up, Okja is amazed to see countless birds soaring in the sky, contrary to Steer's claims. Even though he may have lost most of his strength, Jain hasn't lost everything. Jain believes Okja's words are true, so from now on, he'll honor the promises he made to Okja's mother and his friends. Thus, he sets out to find his companions immediately. Besides Okja standing by his side, Jain is accompanied by many other allies. And that concludes this chapter. See you in the next episode. Peace.